the international sales and marketing hitman, your humble hip hop sales coach, Tiger Toledo. And you already know what it is, man. You rock it with the best. You heard? What up, Tech? What up? Nothing but a G thing. I thought hey, you knew. Man. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, we're going to have a great show today, man. I'm excited. A uh, couple of things, man. A couple of things. So we're, we're I want to make a couple of announcements. Um, we will be rolling out a new show, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, a brand new spanking show. Tech, do you want to tell them the name of the show and uh, what's it going to be about? Yeah, the, the, the name is actually uh, it's, it's kind of bouncing between two possibilities of names. So uh, it's going to definitely be either stay calm with Tekamaku or we're going to just keep it all uh, kosher and just keep it uh, the Golden Stamp Notary Radio. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So, so be on the lookout for that, you guys. That uh, what, what What's the topics going to be like? See, oh, this is going to be a holistic radio show about entrepreneurship and rate and uh, and specifically having to do with the notary industry. But at the same time, mm -hmm. we're going to cover some things about overcoming obstacles and how you got through those hurdles, and really just bring your pers your your specific uh, perspective on a lot of topics because you know there's a lot of information. Anybody can get on YouTube and say anything, can make a channel and just say whatever the heck but they don't necessarily have some of the information to back that up. So we're gonna walk through people's uh, specific journeys and, and get to learn a lot about the individuals and what they did specifically and what they were thinking while they were doing it and some of the yeah. things that they encountered. So it's a lot of background story. You see a lot of the end result, you don't see a lot of the, the ongoing process. So this, this is gonna help you walk through um, some of those uh, hurdle, those hurdles, because I can look back on my life ten years ago, five years ago, and I can see that. See, they that's exactly what I was going through. That's exactly what I was thinking at that time. So, yeah, a lot mm -hmm. of people go, uh, get a lot of help from these shows. Yeah, I'm I'm excited about that. Um, <clears throat> so today uh, we will be talking about quite a few topics. Uh, we're going to be talking about. Ron going live in um, in California. We're also going to be talking about how notar Notarize.com has flipped the script on everybody and they are now going under a different name and what that means to the notary industry. And probably our biggest news thus far right now is uh, Google is making some changes. What does that mean? to your business, and will you still be getting those leads from Google Business Profile as you have been? So go ahead, Tech, lead off, brother. Oh, for sure. So uh, yeah, where do we wanna start? Where do we wanna start? Which one? Yeah, let's start off with um, Ron being legal in California. Okay. Yeah, so there's an interesting new new development. As you know, first of all, Happy New Year's to everybody. Thank y'all yes, for- Yeah, Happy New Year's. Shout out to uh, all the people who rock with us, especially if you uh, are fingerprinting gurus. I need to holler at you, by the way. <laughs> yeah, what up, and, what up, uh, fingerprinting guru? How are you? Yeah, I always like to say hello to everybody who uh, you know joins us and takes the time to rock with us. What up, and, notary world? She's out there in Cali. Uh, it do it doesn't start till twenty thirty. Not necessarily, right, Tech? Technically, it started. Technically, you can get started right now. Right now, there's, um, <clears throat> so there's a beautiful company picture, by the way, Notary World. Beautiful picture, I like it. Yeah, so here's the thing remote online notarizations, or Ron, what is known as, is something that's been accepted across the country in, I believe, 43 states, including California. So, for the most part, here's how people most people approach the Ron uh industry. So if you get a, a document signed, then you meet with a person individually, sit with them across the desk, and then they sign and they stamp the document. Typically, that's how it goes. So with everything turning digital, this economy becoming more digitized and really transitioning online, it would seem appropriate that 
the process of getting your documents notarized would also follow. And that's exactly been the case. For notaries, for the person, I'm not gonna say notaries, for the person, for the individual who becomes a notary, then here's something, here's an opportunity for you to uh, add uh, to what you've already, to your repertoire, to what, you know, what it is that you offer. Now, a lot of people um, who are notaries, and again, I'm gonna be very specific when I say this. These are, I'm not saying notaries, I'm saying people who have notary commissions. And there's a subtle difference between the two. And I'm gonna really make hammer this home because I live in California and I know a lot of people who are, are notaries. I'm gonna give an example that uh, one woman I work with, I'm, let's just call her, uh, let's call her T. <laughs> she is an older woman, in, uh, early 60s. And, you know, she's had a long career in uh, legal work, you know, document preparing and things like that. She added notary to her repertoire in two years ago during the pandemic, really ramped it up, really got it going until she had a surgery, until she needed to have a knee surgery. And then that sidelined her or that prevented her from going out into the uh, field and doing all the traveling and going up and downstairs and going to people's houses. I work with her in the capacity that when I would get clients, I would refer them out to her. I would send, I would contract with her and she would go execute the notarizations and she would let me know whether or not she was able to do it. Until a time when she stopped responding and I found out that she had surgery, so she had to be sidelined for a while. Slowly and gradually, she stopped doing notarizations. When she found out that Ron was becoming legal in California, she was all of a sudden excited again because it meant she didn't have to travel. She could stay home and she could sit in her apartment and she could just log onto her computer. She would still be able to get contracts. She would still be able to earn income and she would still be able to keep her commission. It would seem obvious, right? Here's the thing. I'm paying her $75, $100 to go out and do these executions. When she signs up with this platform, that $100 has been reduced significantly. No longer is she able to make the $100 that she was able to Earn. She thought she would be able to because it's California, because the prices are so high, because there's a, 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 a multitude of opportunities. But that hundred dollars actually turned into five dollars, and as much as twenty dollars. So if you were able to drop eighty percent or almost ninety five percent of your profits and still survive, then by all means go ahead. If that doesn't sound like you, then this is this is why I want you to pay attention. With this new passage of this uh, capability to do remote online notarizations for this is for Californians. This really goes to everybody. I'm really speaking to everybody in the country, but I'm really uh, honing this particularly on Californians. If your motive and your intention is to continue to be as profitable and be as busy as you once were, then I've got some news for you. Now that this is open, now that this is available statewide, now, here's what you can expect. A company that consolidates all of the notaries in the state of California, they can now use that, that uh, capacity, uh, California being the largest uh, you know, popular state, most real estate here, the highest earning state. If you're a notary in California and you were hoping to capture, uh, to cash in on some of that development, then you're going to be surprised mm -hmm. if all of a sudden you don't see an increase in work, you don't see an increase in revenue. You're going to be surprised. I'm not going to be surprised. And here's why you shouldn't be surprised. If you're a company like uh, Notarize or a company like uh, Proof that we're going to talk about later on. And then you now have the capacity to do business within the state lines, which you didn't before prior to uh, you know, last week, <laughs> right? That's why we kind of talk about it doesn't start to 2030. Well, a company like Notarize, they can actually start executing those notarizations with their uh, notaries that are in other parts of the country. 
if you are a notary and you are trying to do remote online notarizations with the intention of trying to increase your income, then I want you to uh, take a second look. Unless you can compete on a advertising um, level with a company like Notarize or with a company like Blue Notary or whatever platform it is, unless you can put the level of advertising and the level of marketing and get in front of a client, meaning they type in Google, I need a notary, and then your name, your individual company name pops up above a company like Notarize or a company like Blue Notary or a company like any other realm platform. If you can accomplish that, if you have the budget and you have the skill, and you know, and you have the technical know-how to get above them, then you you win the client. Then you can, you have the possibility of earning that client's business. But if you don't think you can compete with their marketing budget, which you can't, if you don't think you can compete with their marketing and their advertising budget, which I highly doubt you can. I know I can't, and I'm skilled at this. Tiger, you know this. I actually learned. If you have the ability to compete statewide, by the way, not, you know, and they're not spending small money. I believe they completed $374 billion in real estate transactions. Then you yes. can go ahead and compete with them. Now, here's another thing I, I want to add in here. This is really targeted towards people who do real estate closings. If you are a notary and you primarily two-step in the real estate, loan doc, refinance purchases, if you if that's your bread and butter, then um, you need to pay very close attention to this, very close. So for the record, I haven't done a loan doc transition a transaction in, in, I don't know, years. <laughs> Personally, I, I, don't, I can't remember the last time I just bought a ream of paper for the first time in three years. Before Christmas, I had a I ordered some Christmas gifts on Target and I actually threw in another five dollar, you know, 500 stack of paper. That was the first time I bought paper in three years. I haven't used my printer in like for not for notary related stuff in years. But if you if you two step in this industry and you, you've kind of you saw it go up, you saw it go down. You think that it's going to go up again. And now with the passage of this remote online bill, it's going to give you the capacity to do remote online organizations on your own. Here's the reality. The truth is, if you don't work for these platforms, meaning you don't have a business anymore, you actually have given yourself another job. You have now become an employee or contractor for these companies. No, you're trained by them. They're going to train you on their software, on their platform, on their procedures. They're, it's, it's an, they're going to hand you an employee handbook, hmm. you know, disguised as a subcontractor or independent contractor, disguised as it. And you're going to abide by their rules. You're going to work on their timeline. You're going to get paid, but they pay you. You're going to work when they tell you to work. You are going to effectively become an employee for these ROM platforms. Unless you can compete with them on an advertising marketing level, which, um, and I, I can't compete with them. I And if I can't compete with them, I know you're, you're not competing with these people. It would be a waste of time for you to try to compete with Notarize.com. It would be a waste of time. It would be a waste of time for me to compete with Target or Walmart. It would make no sense for me to try to compete with Microsoft. You know what I'm saying? You're not speaking to the yeah, same. Yeah, they're dominant in the world. Yeah. Yeah, it's a, it's a you're you're speaking a completely different language. So, so yes, it's exciting. Yes, we we've expected the evolution of technology. Um, but let's look at the past and let's look at where let's learn from the past and let's see where things are going. In the past, you've always had the advantage by being the owner. You always had more leverage when you are the person who's calling the shots. You're the person who's setting the price. You're the person who's making the decisions. You have the playing field. It's yours. Not when you're playing with somebody else because what we've learned when there's massive tech layoffs, 
There were massive uh, people uh, losing their jobs. Economy. Sh the moment that Notarize sees that you're not helping, or or uh, you know you're affecting their bottom line, maybe you're uh, you know you're slow to execute a notarization. Boom, you're replaced. And then now what? You're gonna go to another platform and then work for them. Here's the warning. It, it, now we're not just here to just sound alarms. We're here to give you solutions. This is what we've always done. This yeah. is why we sound different. This is why our message always sounds a little bit different. It always seems a little bit different because we're gonna give you a solution. It doesn't sound like it's the prettiest, but ultimately it is the solution. The solution is always and has always always been and always will be is to you be the owner, to you call the shots, you to own the company. That means get the client yourself, you determine the price, you determine the playing field, you get the customer. That's what it's always been. If it's not that way, then you just have to accept that you now then contract or you work for another company. That might be cool with you. And if it is, good luck. I'm not saying don't do it. I'm just saying caution, caution. If you expecting this to become, all right, here's my new source of income. Here's my new revenue stream. Not so fast. Yeah, so fingerprinting guru said, uh, so they're creating a monopoly. Yes. Yes, they are. That's right. um, as they should. As, as they, they should. Look, 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 let's let, let's be honest, y'all. <laughs> let's be honest, man. Like, who wants to be in second place? Not I. So if you have the ability to to dominate and monopolize an industry. You should do that. Otherwise, you're very comfortable with the scraps. Um, they they do have the budget. I'm not sure exactly what happened with the FedEx deal um, with Ron, which we'll get into um, notarize.com in a second. But uh, you know they have the budget. They are they are making large business to business deals. They have the technology. They have the engineers and software engineers working on this thing tirelessly. Um, so like Tech was saying, uh, competing with them in the advertising space, eesh, you know, they're, they're, they're probably playing with a five, six budget a month, uh, you know, budget for, for advertising. So this now what, what are some of the solutions that you can offer or tell people, Tech, that they can you know, either make a pivot or actually use the utilize their services for their benefits. What what would you suggest, brother? Hey, I'm glad, you asked. Man. I'm glad you asked. Yeah. Because first of all, thank you guys for being here. Just by you yes. being here on this live, listening, watching this video, just by you being here, thank you. And you've done yourself a service. You've done yourself a great benefit by being here getting this message, getting this information, because you're not going to get this information from a lot of sources. I guarantee most people are excited. They're juiced about doing a remote online notary. Here's another revenue stream. Here's the thing, though. Here's a question you have to ask yourself. Where did the client come from? Did it come from, did the client contact you directly? Because this is notion that going direct, meaning I go and buy some cheeses and Doritos and Lay's potato chips and donuts and drop them off at a title company, that's going direct. Mm -hmm. There's this notion that that is what it means to go direct. I'm here to tell you something. Going direct, the, there's only one way to go direct, and that's going directly to the customer. That's what going direct means. If you're not going directly to the customer, you're not going direct. If the customer is not coming directly to you, that's not going direct. You have 100%. to go directly to the customer. So by you being here, this is the number one thing I want to tell you. Your focus has to be changed. Your, there has to be one goal, one goal only. The customer needs to come directly to me. That's your goal. 
Because at that time, now you control the playing field. Now you control the rules. So here's what I would do. Number one, first thing I would always do is get a cell phone. Get a separate cell phone dedicated to your business. Committed cell phone that's only for business transactions, 100%. Number one, it shows that you do have a business, <laughs> right? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And let's not talk about taxes because if you're writing off your tax bill, if you're writing off your cell phone bill on your taxes, then the easiest way to do it is to have a separate cell phone. 100% written off, 100%. So number one, get yourself a separate cell phone then that cell phone needs to be connected to a website or some type of web presence because when people look for you, they're going to call the number that's on that website. And we're going to talk about the websites later on when we start to talk about Google. But I'm not going to overwhelm you with a whole laundry list of things to do. If you don't have a cell phone, go get that first. That's, sec that's number one. But let's say you already do have a cell phone. And it's not a Google Voice number, by the way. <laughs> Dish the Google Voice numbers. Google Voice might end that next. Mm, talk on it. That might be the next thing that they get rid of. Google got a hell of a lot of switcheroos on people, man. Hey, take my take my experience with Google for what it's worth, y'all. It's real. It shouldn't surprise you if they do switch it up. That's what a company does. <laughs> the next thing to do after you get a cell phone, is to now you have to build your empire on your own soil. This is one of my favorite quotes from my brother Asam Malik. You have to build your empire on your own soil. What does that mean? That means your website. It can't be connected to Squarespace, to Wix, to GoDaddy. I mean, because GoDaddy goes out of business, and Wix goes out of business, Squarespace goes out of business. What's left? You need to have an independent presence that's under your control. Well, tech, damn, I don't even like websites, man. I never built a website. Oh, well, you need to use the landing page route then. You need to go and have a presence that you control. Yes. It's got to be under your control because at any point in time, they can switch it up on you. And then what happens to what you did? What happens to your business? It's gone. Now, this is not something that can't be done. This is something that could truthfully be done in a weekend with some real legit focus. It could be done in a weekend. So this is not some months long monumental task. This is something that can be implemented in a, a short bit of time. And with the right steps, you know, you'll be this is the foundation that that, with, that can't be collapsed. This is the reason why when Ron goes public in California, I don't worry. Mm. Or some people don't worry because You've got that foundation that can't you can't go backwards once you've got the phone, you've got the solid website presence, you've got assets that you control. So those, those would be my solutions. And then the second, and so you say, tech, I got the phone, I own my own website. Then now what? How do I get customers? There's the fast way and then there's the freeway. <laughs> you can do it the freeway or you can do it the fast way. The fastest way to do it, the free way to do it would be just to go around and sign up, you know, where people are looking for notaries, which is online, right? Directories, listings, databases, listservs, things like that, handing out business cards requires work. It requires some, some, you know, some footwork, you know, telling your family members word of mouth. But as we all know, the world is the direction is going. Look again, what we learn, let's learn from the previous 20 years. Let's look at, to the next 20 years. What direction is it going? Everything's going online. Everything's been yep. stuff. I would, this is what I would do. I wouldn't do it the freeway because again, you have a business. I would do it the fast way. I would start advertising. I would put money as you should. You should be, you should be putting money into the business, right? Because this is a business, right? You should be putting something, not I ain't saying put something down into advertising so that in the event that somebody calls, somebody wants to get a notary done, they can at least find you and then they can and then you can service them. But you have to get in front of people's faces. And, you know, that comes with a lot of other stuff as far as, well, what do I charge? What do I say? You know, I, I can only charge two dollars. The state only allows me to charge a dollar and 50 cents. It, it, all right, and then at that point, the question is, 
why did you get into this industry? And when I work with people, the first thing I always like to ask them is, why did, how did you even learn about this industry? Because this, if somebody is make, only making $2 for a signature and that sounded appealing to you, <laughs> then, you know, <laughs> what happened? Where did it go wrong? So it's time for a new lesson. It's time for people to wake up. And I'm here to wake you up. I'm here to take that pillow from underneath your head and just wake you up, man. Yeah. No, no, that's solid. I, I, I'm noticing um, that speed is extremely important in today's climate and today's market. I was just reading the Wall Street Journal earlier today. And did you know that Walmart has launched in Fort Worth, Texas, uh, drone delivery. Drone delivery. You will have drones <laughs> bring deliveries. I guess it, it depends on where you live. It's a house or if it's a rural area. But they're estimating by uh, June of this year, they should have 73% of, of Fort Worth, Texas, deliveries being done by drones. So what that tells me as a business person is that convenience and speed is extremely important. And a cardinal rule in business is you never justify speed. So if a person can get something notarized online without waiting and stuff like that, they're going to <laughs> attack the quickest way possible the most convenient and quickest way possible. Now, for some people, the quickest way would be to call a notary to come out because somebody may be bedridden. They may not have, uh, they may not be technologically savvy and stuff like that. So you will, you will always have a market for that. I'll say that you will always have a market that look, my nephew is a millennial doesn't even know how to send an email. That doesn't even want to learn how to send an email. Some people, technology just isn't their thing. That's right. Right? Um, baby boomers, technology just isn't their thing. It's not that they can't learn it. They have no interest in learning it. They have no interest. So you'll always have a market for mobile notaries. We're looking at it as, all right, what does this mean for the industry? What what is the climate looking like? What is the forecast looking like? Notarize is not letting up. They're not. No, Matter they see a, they see an opportunity there. They they if, and again, this is for overwhelming majority. And I talked about this before. When I went to go renew my commission, there were there were about eighty two people in the room, and all of them except for two were classified as notary signing agents meaning they they specialized in real estate executions okay so what that means is what that means is they either work for somebody at a legal firm or hospital or whatever bank type of outfit or they only did real estate like yeah, people say, yeah, I'll do a power of attorney. I, I guess I've never done that before, but I can do it. No, 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 no. If you're not getting the client yourself, then, you know, this is new. This is new territory because it involves sales, like this training that we're doing now. It involves an entirely different approach. It involves pricing. It involves negotiation. You know, it, it, it involves systems. It, it involves processes that, execute that get the you know it involves communication with the customer it involves a completely different aspect than just getting a text message from a from your phone and then going out to somebody's house and then sending documents back and then waiting 40 days to get paid most people are the ron industry is kind of tailored around the real estate industry and that's why people are excited but let's not forget let's not forget that's only a portion of it. There's there's this whole entire world that you may not even been exposed to where notarizations take place on a daily basis. Trust has to have to get updated. Gun permits have to be applied for. Uh, uh, passport applications have to be sent. 
driver's license have to be updated. Um, agreements, you know, I can go on and on and go on. Leasing agreements, uh, cars, boats have to be sold. They, they, like, there's all this other aspects of the whole notarization industry, and it has nothing to do with whether or not you can do it remotely. Sometimes the person might just say, hey, listen, I'm outside of the UPS store right now, and they told me that they can't sign this. I need it done, like, right, right now. Mm -hmm. Can you send somebody out? Well, we can do it remotely. Well, no, no, no. Can you, can, can I, I need to send somebody, I need to see somebody, or I'm a family and I'm an immigrant family and we got a power of attorney that needs to be translated from Spanish to English. And, um, you know, I need to actually ask some questions and I would like to speak to somebody. We can do it remotely. No, no, no. You think Notarize will let you give a consultation over the phone to their clients? <laughs> you, you think that, listen, it's always going to be top priority, number one, for you to get the client. It's never going to change. Notarize knows that. <laughs> They're going to get the client. They get the client, and then they then disperse or, or uh, distribute it amongst all the other notaries. And then you know they pay you for uh, doing their work and building their business. It's always going to be that. <laughs> Fingerprinted <laughs> Finger guru said they drinking that Kool-Aid tech. <laughs> Pick up, sip, sip, man. I <laughs> uh, got my girl LaShonda Collins in the building. Shout out to everybody on here. Shout out to Notary World. Uh, appreciate you guys. You guys are putting on some great comments, uh, Sharon. Please share this video uh, with your with your fellow colleagues, uh, people on your platform. It really helps out with this channel. Um, you know, hit that like button it really helps with the algorithm supposedly i don't know i don't speak algorithm um and if you haven't subscribed to the channel please subscribe to the channel so uh tech we're gonna go into our next topic brother uh which is notarize.com decided to flip the script and call themselves proof what do you know about that bro yeah uh, this is big news, you guys. I like this. I like this story mm -hmm. because, no, as, as many people know, like we just were discussing, you know, notarize.com, which is a great name, by the way. Like, kudos to them who got that, that domain name. But for people who wanted to notarize things, get documents signed um, online, electronically, then they were able to do that. Now, Here's a lesson in entrepreneurship, and here's a lesson in business building. And, and we can all learn something from them. So they recently, as uh, recently as October of last year, 2023, that they um, came up with this new company called Proof. Now, mm -hmm. Proof should um, Proof should should sound familiar because here's the thing: before you could execute an online notarization, you had to prove who you are right you can't just appear in front of a notary and then sign something it has to be bob it has to be sharon it has to be tiger it's got to be it's got to be you have to prove to us that you are the way you did that is through these these questions and you know they call kba questions these knowledge based assessment knowledge based assessment questions where you would then prove that you are this person you could actually execute or facilitate this notarization here's what i'm going to guess happened right because as entrepreneurs, we know the first iteration of what we put out isn't always the last thing. Sometimes it evolves into something else. And there's every company you can probably think of has started as something else and then it evolved into what you now know it as today. And um, I like to tell the story of Groupon. Groupon is a, is a great example of that. Groupon, people know, is a company that you know gives you uh, these coupons for these outings and these social events. It didn't start that way, though. Groupon actually started off as like a community fundraising event or a disability for companies to or for uh, individuals who supported one cause. Let's say you supported a political cause. You would go out. So we're going to have a pizza party down at, um, you know, uh, NYC Pizza. And then for everybody who comes, we're going to, you know, Take a portion of the money and then we're gonna donate it to this cause. 
Groupon actually started off like that. And then it, as they found out is that people like to show up and um, get discounts. So what they did was they evolved it into this business model that, that became Groupon. Notarized in a similar fashion, here's just probably what happened, right? I don't know this, I haven't verified this, but probably something along those lines. What they realized is that there were some issues with identifying people. Oftentimes people would come on, they would have some issues with whether or not their ID match or you know, the camera didn't work on their phone. And they were having these problems with identifying people. And also in California, and I've talked about this in the past. Oh, <laughs> when I said a round would never pass in California, I'm on a record of saying that it would never pass. One of the issues that a lot of the estate planning attorneys would talk about is that if I have a client with the $800 million estate, I need to know it's that person. My client has a hundred million dollars. This is a hundred million dollar client. I need to see them that they are breathing, living. They have blood in their veins. This is a real person. When, when they're making updates, yeah, yeah, your, your, your little funky family trust where you guys got a you know got a house and a couple assets. Yeah, that's cool and all, and that's important. But what about the person? And and in California, this is why California was the last one to implement this. Hmm. We need, there's a lot of money here, guys. I don't know if you guys are aware of this. There's a lot of money here in California. And when when you start signing stuff, then we need to know that it's you. This is why California has the strictest laws in terms of becoming a notary. I got to pass a six-hour test, got to pass a background check and all this. You got to renew it every four years so that we know that you haven't been signing documents and then looking the other way. You haven't been leaving your stamp with the title office and then going on vacation with your $150,000 in your briefcase. We need to make sure that you haven't been pulled over for DUIs and that you ain't been doing no funny stuff. Hmm. So in California, what I believe what happened is they realized they were having all these issues with identifying people and they solved it. So now Proof is, be is becoming this identification company where they verify people's identity and now they make it so 100% bulletproof that the person who's signing this document is in fact that person. So let's say Tiger, you're the executive of a of a, of Uber. You know, mm -hmm. you're a high-ranking C-level executive of Uber or a hospital, a hospital system or something like that, right? And you need to uh, sign off on approvals for a bunch of people's licenses. Maybe you have uh, you have contractors and remote workers all around the world, Brazil, India. North Africa, everywhere. Mm -hmm. Your the stroke of your pen is going to have a massive effect. So we need to prove that you are in fact you. Because Tiger, you might be on vacation somewhere in the Bahamas, Facts. and if you need to sign this document internationally at two a.m. West Coast time, but it's eleven o'clock somewhere in the island somewhere, then we need to make sure that it is you. So. They probably saw, I'm not saying that's what happened, but I'm saying something like what Notarize first started off as and now it's evolved into this, just like Facebook yeah. kind of evolved into meta. Like these, what you put out the first time, and this is the lesson we can take away from this as entrepreneurs mm -hmm. and as business owners. This is why it's important to be a business owner and not be subject to someone else's rules in their playing field by working for them. You need to work for yourself. I'm not saying don't work for them. I'm saying... You also need to work for yourself. It probably evolved, and this is what they discovered. Man, this identifying stuff is going to be big. If everything is online, if all these digital transactions are in this new economy is going to be happening virtually, we got to be the persons, the people who ident who can 100% ensure that that person is that person. That's And that's what you see now. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I, I hope you guys are enjoying the conversation, ladies and gentlemen. We just talked about um, Ron going live in California. Uh, right now, we are talking about Notarize.com switching their name to Proof.com. So I, I'm not sure if they're good. At, well, according to their website, and you guys can actually go to the link in the description. I put the link of uh, where we were doing our research. You can actually do some of the research yourself. So I put the link in there in the description tab for you. Uh, it looks like they're completely changing their 
name. They're not even going to go by notarize.com. They're introducing themselves now as proof. So they're, <laughs> you know, so for people that are going to be talking about notarize.com, just know that proof is going to be the new name of that. So what what is the cost that they're charging? I think, it, is it like $25 for the client to actually get it done, but they're paying the notary $5? Is, is that right, Tech? Yeah, I can't verify that, but you yeah. know, it, put it this way. If you got the client, what would you charge $25? Now, I know the answer to that, but mm -hmm. I'm asking this to the audience. If you got the client, would you charge $25 or, or would you charge $5 or would it be something else? For me, I, I, charge, I charge as much as I could possibly charge to get the, the client. Which is the right answer. Which is mm -hmm. the right answer. Right. You should you should charge as high as you can possibly reasonably charge. Well, what's reasonable tech? I don't know what's reasonable. Yeah. This is why you have to become a business owner and understand the industry, understand your market, understand the competition, understand yeah. what it is that you need. Well, you know, so this is the this is the reason why if this is the reason why you you can you can bulletproof yourself from BS. This is why when notarized introduces this new platform and they ask you to work for them and then you say ah this doesn't make sense it literally literally doesn't make sense it doesn't it's not worth my time if i'm going to charge five dollars or if i'm going to get paid five dollars but i would normally charge 290 then is it worth your time no it, it wouldn't be or 135 or anything you know the numbers is the numbers but i would think of it as Am I am how am I how how is this helping me? You know, mm -hmm. your client is definitely listen, your client's gonna get the document signed somewhere, <laughs> right? This is why it, it comes back to understanding what is a notary, what is what is a the person who well a notary is somebody who defends from fraud. Listen, I, yeah, we get all that. I'm saying. Do you know what a notary is doing? How do you understand this profession from not just answering the phone and signing a document, but understanding that this person has a loved one that's in the hospital or this person has gotten their car stolen and then State Farm has issued them this letter in order for them to receive their check. They need to get this signed and proven. Understanding the motivation behind what it is that you're facilitating. That's what a notary is doing. This person has a will and, you know, this person is, is you know, they got some kids that they don't really get along with and they want to make sure that they don't get, the, you know, the, the the house and the in the in the jury that so they want to make sure that they get a will executed. But before, you know, they become uh, sick or Ill. understand that's what a notary is doing, really. That's what that that's what yeah. you're doing. That's what you're answering. So uh, Miami Beach notary said. Are they the number one online platform in the world? So yes. I would say I would say this: they are they are at the top of the mind of remote online notarization. I won't say that they're number one. I would say that when it comes to thinking about Ron, Notarize.com is usually what people think of um, first. So, sort of like. When you think of luxury vehicles, you're thinking of Mercedes, BMW, right? Um, Rolls Royce. Yes. They are at the top of mind because they aggressively push that brand. Um, and it goes back to uh, what fingerprinting guru said that uh, they're rebranding their their company right now, which is which is correct. Um, and when you rebrand a company, it gives you the ability to restructure the whole playing field. So if they used to pay uh, notaries, let's just say half of that $25, because they're doing the rebranding, they can now drop it down to $5. Now it's, this is just a way of business, right? They're always, businesses are always gonna try to make themselves as lean as possible. They're always going to try to, and you as an entrepreneur, a business owner, you're listening to this uh, broadcast right now, that is your job as well. You're not supposed to be heavy weight like that, right? It shouldn't be bureaucratic 
in your business. It should be streamlined. It should be very lean and efficient. And that's what they're doing right now. So they're going to probably pay the notaries less, increase their profit margin just off of the rebranding, just like you said, uh, fingerprinting guru. Yeah, so cool. that's serious. That is serious. It's a great point, uh, man. Let me see. We, we, we got a comment here. Natural Jesse. Let's pull up your comment real quick. Uh, the issue with these platforms farming out the work is that the notaries do the notarizations wrong and then the client loses money. I get so many clients that have used notarized and paid. That's a good point. Mm -hmm. What do you say? Yeah, uh, fingerprinting guru said them $5 fees are Bangladesh amount. <laughs> um, That's a good point that Natural Jesse brought up about, you know, and getting paid about $100 is trying to get the doc notarized on their platform. Then comes to me and get it done correctly. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So I'm guessing that she's talking about I'm coming in in person. Like they try to go to get it notarized online, goes bad or it does incorrectly, which happens. That happens. Mm -hmm. And then mm -hmm. all of a sudden they start, uh, find out where Natural Jesse lives or where she operates or he or she operates and then goes to uh, get it done, executed. And that happens. You know, that happens. So then what? Now Notarize is going to fire you because you work for them. You yeah. thought you worked for yourself, but you don't work for yourself. You work for them. And, that, and, and I think that's um, one of the things that we try to emphasize the most, too, on this platform is that we don't speak to you guys as notaries. We speak to you as entrepreneurs who happen to be in the notary industry, right? We look at you as business owners. We look at you as moguls in this business. You just happen to be a notary or in the notary business. So um, one of the things that I wanted to um, share with you guys is that because of you, we have our first sponsorship, right? Uh, let me announce that this uh, this broadcast is brought to you by Opus Clip. Nice. Now, Opus Clip is a platform that I use. Um, I take my long form videos and then I'm able to slice and dice it. I actually put the link in the description for you guys to give it a free try. Um, this is basically what it does here. It will take your long form video and then it will chop it up and make it in a short clip so you can actually take advantage of uh, YouTube stories, Instagram reels, because that is where a lot of the attention is going now. They're trying to compete with TikTok. So if you're not uh, taking advantage of that, I would highly suggest that because it will increase your subscriber count by 63%. So thank you, Opus Clip, for sponsoring this video. Opus and Clip back great. to the regular scheduled program. <laughs> yeah, Opus Clip is great. Yeah. Um, all right. Here, here's the big story. Here's the big story that uh, we've been meaning to talk about here. Google. Google. Uh, tech was the first person to break this one, this news to me. Google is actually disabling their landing page website. <laughs> I've used their, their website landing page before. It was very convenient. People were able to just jump on there and then they'll say, call now. They'll hit the button. Next thing you know, they're calling you. I was like, oh, this is great. Now, I, I have my own website going at the same time, but that was a feature that they offered. So it, it kind of gave me the opportunity to have two websites. So anytime you can uh, be in multiple places at once, you want to take advantage of that. But uh, as of recently, let me uh, pull up, pull this up from Google so you guys can see. And again, we put the link in the description so you can actually read up on it yourself. So websites made with Google Business Profile will turn off soon. Starting from March 1st, 2024, customers will be redirected to their business profile 
when they visit the website. So those that had websites, this could be this could be a little bit disturbing for you. You may have to do a bit of a pivot on this uh, subject matter. If you are heavily dependent on Google landing page website, because at, at the end of the day, tech, it was a landing page, wasn't it? Yes. Very effective, though, because it was connected to Google, so it helped out with the search and the SEO. Yes. Um, I actually pulled up an additional article on here so you guys can actually see. Um, go ahead. Speak on that tech while I pull up this article real quick. Yeah, actually. So this now, see, because we worked with notaries in the past and I've worked with a lot of notaries around the country, one thing I would always do, and um, I never forget this, man, we would always do, we would, we would it, there was this exercise that we used to do. I'm going to kind of briefly explain what this exercise consisted of. So I want you guys to follow me here in this. So imagine this. Imagine being in a room full of entrepreneurs, notary entrepreneurs. And in order to illustrate how easy it was to take over your own backyard, to tur turn over, take over your own state, even, even your own area, we would do this exercise. And I'm going to kind of explain what this exercise looked like. You're in this room full of notary entrepreneurs. And just pick a city. Just, just, and we might even be able to do this right now, just to kind of demonstrate how effective, this, how easy it is to take over your area. So let's just take Dallas, for example, Dallas, Texas. We would type in notary in Dallas. You can even do this right now. And see the search results. And then we would go down the list and we would click to see how many people had websites. How many people had their own individual empires on their own soil, or they had these Google automated generated websites for them. Now, there's nothing wrong with those websites that Google made because like you said, they were already optimized. They were great. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. They were very basic and they didn't look nice. They were like they were not, you know, professional websites, but they were highly optimized for the Google search results because after all, they did show up near me by Google. If that's what you depended on, and that's solely what you operated on as a website, meaning somebody clicked notary in Dallas, they would go scroll, scroll down the results, they would see a picture that they liked, or maybe some hours of operation. And then whatever compelled the potential clients to click on that link, they did it. And then they it took them to this landing page, which is essentially what it was a website, but essentially a landing page. Had some information about your business, hours, phone number, what have you. Maybe there was a button there. And then they would click a button inquiry, make appointment, call call a business. And then that was it. Those are gone. Done. Finished. If that's what you solely relied upon the last three, four, five years, however long, um, I wouldn't wait until March. I would wait until maybe this weekend and get started on refreshing your web presence because we would go through these profiles and there were tons of people, tons of results, tons of notaries who use these websites. And again, nothing was wrong with these websites if they actually converted and, and led to some uh, potential business, which they can do. But if that's what you relied upon as a website and, um, and now that that's gone. See, some of us remember the MySpace effect. I know Tiger mm -hmm. does. Absolutely. I know Tiger does. <laughs> Yeah, I, I, I my my business went bankrupt because of that. If you don't know what we're talking about, then that means uh, you're not of a certain age, but you don't have to be. It's just the concept that you have to understand. MySpace was a platform that many people use for business and social uh, media. And then when they went out of business, everything that they had connected, because it had never happened before. Something just didn't completely go away overnight so quickly. But here it is. Yeah. So let me read this real quick, bro. Uh, so it says, uh, websites made on Google business profiles will be turned off soon. Websites made with Google business profiles are basic websites powered by the information on the business profile. In March 2024, websites made with Google business profile will be turned off. 
and customers visiting your site will be redirected to your business profile instead. The redirect will work until June 10th, 2024. So the reason why I wanted to read that part is because I want you to try to put yourself in your customer's shoes for a second and think about if you were searching for a notary, do you believe that that little icon where it says visit website has a significant influence on your customers? Because now, um, you know, they can judge you by that, right? They can say, well, this person has a website. This person doesn't have a website. I feel a little more comfortable going with a notary that has a website. Do you feel that may affect the decision and buying process of your potential customer by having a website or not having a website? Now, I will say this from a marketing standpoint, from a sales standpoint, I don't believe notaries need a full blown website for this industry. No. You don't need an about us. Nobody cares that you like to walk your Pomeranian in the snow. <laughs> um, they, they don't want to hear about what your hobbies are and stuff like that and how long you've how been a notary. You are. Yeah, yeah. no, 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 no. They have a specific goal. They have a document that they need to execute on. I believe that a landing page is more than sufficient enough um, tied in with some Really good sales copy. If you guys haven't seen my interview with Donnie Bryant, look that up so you can actually uh, really know about the sales copy. It's amazing. Uh, you could really start to persuade and pre-frame people's buying decisions just off of sales copy. So look up that Notary War Room episode with Donnie Bryant. Um, a landing page is more than sufficient enough. What do you think, Tech? Yeah, <clears throat> landing page will get the job done because, again, it goes back to the question. Do you know what a notary is? A lot of people say, yeah, of course I know what a notary is. And I'm, I, I challenge that. Do you mm -hmm. really know what a notary is? A notary is not somebody who's going to deter fraud. Yes, it is, but they're not. Somebody who's looking to get a document signed and stamped. That's it. When can you come and do this? Mm -hmm. And if you have a website, then I think that Number one, it it overcomes the hurdles that comes with um, being able to charge reasonable prices. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? If you are having a hard time struggling with people who are accepting your price, it's probably because your website doesn't look very nice. And you're trying to justify how come, how is it that you, you know, it's all about presentation, isn't it? If somebody's mm -hmm. calling you and then you have a hard time convincing them or getting them to agree to your price, then I would... It's probably a couple of things we can point to that that could um, stand to be improved, and that could uh, you know that could help you uh, convert more clients, so to speak. So, a website absolutely can um, it, it will help you stand out because if people don't have websites, then you automatically are not a law. Put it this way: I'm in an engineering firm, and we've got to get some uh, um, some permits approved for a bridge that we're constructing in China. We got to get the concrete, um, somebody to sign up on the concrete that we're getting ready to uh, to send so that we can build this bridge. It's about 120 signatures that we got to get signed. And um, mm -hmm. we need a notary. And this is a true story. You've done this one. This is a true story. <laughs> right. <laughs> I'm not just making this stuff up. Yeah. Right. This is, this is the $1,200 deal that you did. Yeah. This is. These, yes. these are true stories. I'm, we, we, we want listen. There is no competition, guys. Like <laughs> you're not competing with us. I, I guarantee you that you're not competing. You know, I, I don't compete with Tiger. Tiger don't compete with me. I don't compete with fingerprinted gurus. We don't compete with each other because, it's, yeah, and not for the reasons that you think. Okay, we don't compete with each other because of our availability. And I break that down in other videos. But here's the thing: if I'm a company and we need to pour some concrete for a bridge in China. And we need to get 120 signatures approved by our executive. Like now, we need it. We need it done now. And then you show up with your Venmo card or your Cash App card. Listen, this can't be left up to chance. You don't even have a website. 
you're easily going to be skipped over. That's an easy, we can disqualify you just off that. So for the, you to command not just the rates, but the type of, but the level of, 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 of appointment, the quality of clients, then, you know, it's, it, it is about presentation and a landing page will get the job done, but you got to have something, right? It's, you got to have the professional greeting. You got to have the call strip. You got to have, this has to be a business. Otherwise, mm -hmm. somebody who's, now, if you're trying to get little Larry from the corner and he's just trying to, you know, trying to get something approved for section eight and, and no, no diss against section eight people. But I'm just saying, if that's, if, if you're dealing with, you know, $5 people, then you'll probably get away with that. But for most people, I imagine most people want to kind of increase or gradually improve their, their clientele. And they want to cater to the people who are a little bit you know, more business, more professionals. And, um, you know, because a lot of notary involves that. A lot of people, if you're getting a notary done, you're probably not living on the street. Okay. Right. You probably have something that you want to protect, something that you want to get, something official that needs to be done. And a lot of businesses need notaries. And if you don't have a professional appearance, it's, I can easily skip over you. That's an easy disqualifier. So what I'm saying is, yeah, the landing pages are great. Websites are great. You know, now is the time to, if notarize, changing their name, uh, Ron being legal, this, all this stuff connects. All this stuff is connected. And Google disabling their websites. Listen, if time, if this time, this present time wasn't a wake up call for notaries to start acting as businesses and not as side hustles, then I don't know what to tell you. There's so many, I can't stand, man. It, it 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 boils my blood when I see people put out videos that say notary is the best side hustle in 2024. Yeah, that burns me up too, man. It's this, yeah. <laughs> the, the whole well, side hustle, people, man. Yeah, the whole side hustle thing, right? I agree. It like that's it's not, I don't think they're doing it intentionally. I don't think they're miseducating you in on purpose. I, I will say that. I, it's, I just, it's just a cool word right now. It's a buzzword, really. Yeah. The whole side hustle thing. People will say side hustle for stocks, side hustle for drop shipping, side hustle for this. It, it's just a really popular buzzword that a lot of people are using uh, in the lexicon right now. Yeah, the word will get you in trouble, though, because, or it'll, it'll it, maybe not in trouble, but you will realize this is not what I thought. This, mm -hmm. I didn't expect it to be like that. I actually was in this to start a business. Yeah. And uh, if that's with you, then I think you're in the right place. So congratulations. Shout out to you for being here and for treating this like a business because it can absolutely be a business. It can be an automated yeah. business. It can be an agency business. It, it, it can absolutely it can be operate. a six figure, seven figure business. Like, ladies and gentlemen, this is a global business. This is a global industry right here. Like they have notaries in Brazil in in England. And like, if you guys really wanted to start branching out globally, you can really do that. You look, it doesn't have to be your backyard. LaShonda, you're out there in Jersey. It doesn't have to be Jersey. Listen, I'm proof. I am living proof. I took this business nationally and and was ex and currently exploring internationally in english speaking countries you can do that you don't have to stay in your backyard what here's the thing once you once you master and i'm not going to say use the word expert but once you master this in your backyard as a business owner mogul entrepreneur it is your job to take this show on the road Mm. You can franchise your business if you want to as well. Have yes. you ever thought about that? Like I said, me and tech do not talk to you guys like notaries. If you want to be talked to like a notary, this ain't the channel for you. Everyone on this channel right now is a boss. 
and I refuse to look at you any other way. You can franchise your notary business. Once you start developing a system and and you have the call scripts and you have um, operations and you understand how to dispatch notaries, you can package that and sell it like McDonald's sells a franchise. Why not? <laughs> Yeah. I, I I just want to drop that mind blowing grenade in your mind to to like really expand. Are you thinking too small? Are you thinking incrementally? There's a book, and I, I want to recommend this book. Um, I'm gonna start recommending books on this uh, platform because a lot of us are very very smart, and we're looking to elevate and take our game to the next level. Uh, the book that I'm currently uh not reading, but I have it on Audible, is called 10x is easier than 2x is by Dan Sullivan and Dr. Uh, I forgot his name. Unbelievable book. Get it on Amazon. Listen to it while you're working out, cleaning dishes, vacuuming the house. So next time we come back to the notary sales training, we could build on a whole nother level. We ain't playing around over here. We ain't trying to be working for notarize.com we'll use them to further our agenda they yes. are just a tool but this is our business let's treat it as such um let's go into some comments real quick because we are uh, approaching the top of the hour tech um this is amazing right here miami beach notary said i had a very interesting international notarization where the signer appeared to have switched genders and I had a hard time verifying the face with the information I was presented. This is a gray area. Wow. I like, see, that's somebody that's already playing in that game to actually see this type of problem. Cause I don't do our uh, run. Right. So I would have never even guessed uh, an obstacle like this. Yeah, and I, I I live in California where there is a lot of people who are transgender. There are a lot of them, man. They're just <laughs> they're just walking around, man. And I actually notarized for a woman who was transitioning to a man, and she had a different name, she had a different ID card, and she had to have two witnesses to verify her identity and the document that she was notarizing was involved with uh, having her undergoing a procedure. And when you look at the ID card and you look at her, right, these are two different people, the face. So great point right there, Natural Jesse. This mm -hmm. stuff happened. And, or uh, it was at Miami, I think. Yeah, Miami. Miami. Okay. Yeah, it, like, so, you know, that has nothing to do with real estate, right? I, I don't know if that one did, but that has nothing to do with you buying or selling or refinancing or, 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 you know, whatever package, whatever package they have going on. And hopefully I'm hoping that you got paid a reasonable amount for that, or you commanded a reasonable amount for that. But I'd love to hear more about uh, those type of incidents. And people get afraid about those things. They get very tense about those things. Listen, at the end of the day, what, again, it goes back to the question, what is a notary? <laughs> What are you trying to do as a notary? I'm trying to deter fraud. Mm -hmm. Yeah. What else? <laughs> you know, think about it like that. Let's see here. Um, yeah, yeah, that that's right. Uh, Miami Beach. Uh, it is a it is a marketing word, one hundred percent. Yeah. Uh, side hustle. It heck. <laughs> Put side hustle in your uh, your next YouTube video and watch you actually get quite a quite a bit of views on your video. It is a popular. Um, it, I think is right now it's rated anywhere fifteen number fifteen as a popular hashtag on YouTube video. So if you're ever gonna add a tag, put side hustle. You will actually generate. Uh, quite a bit of, of viewership just off of that hashtag. Another one is college side hustles. Oh, really? Oh, yeah. College side hustles. And I recommend the notary business to college students, too. 
it would it would be a, a, a wonderful supplemental income for them uh, while they're going to college, doing their classes, and they can schedule appointments around their own time. Boom. Now you don't have to be stuck in a, a facility for the next six, seven hours. You could run an appointment real quick and then get back to your studies. I wish I did it. I wish I did it in college. Yeah, right. Me I too. had all kinds of side hustles or uh, I, I, you know, when I was growing up, I had all kinds of businesses that I was trying. That was one of them. I wish I would have started early. That's right, LaShonda, Myron Golden. That's my guy. That's my man's right there. If you if you guys aren't following Myron Golden, you, you need to. You need to. Um, let's see here. There's a comment about my clients are professionals. I like that client. Yeah, clients are mm -hmm. career professionals. Yeah. You you cater. Those people, they don't like nonsense, man. They, they like exactly what it is that they're asking. And, you know, you could, you could, your notary business can be uh, sort of tailored to, toward that persona. It really can. So uh, fingerprinting guru said black content creators like myself and others uh, get shortchanged, but they will pay the other guy. Ask for my expertise, but pay the other guy. Well, I will say, I will say this uh, fingerprinting guru. It, it really is about how you're negotiating the deal. Um, we were just talking about this uh, tech. Oh, it was a situation where a person was uh, looking to exchange services with a person. Like they had value. The other person had value. And instead of paying each other, they would barter. The problem with that situation was that the person uh, didn't execute um, at a timely fashion, right? So I had suggested to the person that it's important that you pre-frame and you state your stipulations early on in the conversation so there is no confusion. So in that situation, I said, hey, look, um, if I extend my services to you, I can get you trained up in 30 days. If you're going to extend your services over to me, bartering, right? I expect you to have it completed in 30 days. Mm. Otherwise, we could part as friends. We don't have to work together. So I, I, I would strongly suggest, Fingerprinting Guru, that you pre-frame and you negotiate the deals because we did a video not too long ago, right, Tech? about people entering negotiating situations and not even knowing that they're in a negotiating situation. Great example. Great advice, too. Uh, let's see, let's see. Yeah, you guys have some great comments. Um, so yeah, we're at the top of the hour, Tech. Did you want to uh, leave the family anything? Uh, any yeah, last words? Yeah, you know, we do have a backstage and there's a question that says about um, how to franchise um, my remote online notary business. The same way you would do a, a in-person notary business. You outlined it, the call scripts, the SOPs, the standard operating procedures, you know, the rules, the prices, all that stuff. I have a, I have a list of 22 notaries who I work with. Of those 22 people, eight of them, they, they actually run my system, which is the automated system. And they have success. They don't rely upon me. They, this is in effect a a franchise or an extension of what I operate. It's theirs, their name on it, their face on it, and stuff like that. But at its core, the principles is essentially what it is that I do, which is basically it's going to allow you to run your nine to five or, or or be in college, and then be able to accept orders, be able to accept clients. Either you do it or somebody else does it. And then you pay them appropriately or, mm -hmm. or you uh, go ahead and schedule it when you're available. And that's the system. So how would you franchise that? Exactly how you, uh, I would go back and rewind that and listen to how Ty kind of broke that down. Because that's exactly right. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, we really appreciate you guys. I hope you and guys enjoyed the show. Uh, Tech, how can they follow you, brother? Yeah, uh, they can follow me on Instagram at tech.amaku, T-E-K-K. -K. Mm -hmm dot a m a k u or you can go to drtech.com and read about the brain box this is a community for for notaries who are entrepreneurs and people who want to treat this like a business yeah 
Oh, oh, by the way, I also wanted to mention for those that want to know a little bit more about uh, the Ron platforms and which platforms were good and the pros and cons on that. I did a notary war room interview with Mark Saez. Uh, he, uh, we did that in October, October 16th. Um, look, go on to the notary war room and look up this episode right here. He gives really good insight on the pros and cons of using that and what to be uh, on guard for. Because he said, if you give them the ability, they will pillage through your customer base. That, that's serious. That's serious. Um, so yeah, check out that episode right there. Uh, again, we put uh, the links to the research that we've done, and then I'll be adding more links to that in the description so you can see what Google is doing, what uh, notarize.com slash proof is doing, um, and then uh, Ron, what they're doing out there in California. Until then, ladies and gentlemen, we love you. We wish you peace, love, and happiness. I hope everything goes well for you. Let's get this money, y'all. You heard? <laughs>